Phonix is Far Up Summerland's exciting new Vakuma thrill coaster. It's a completely original layout made up of airtime hills, inversions, steep drops, bank turns. It's a full package, super fun experience. This is going to be my full in-depth review of the attraction. It just opened earlier this year in 2022. So I was excited to get out to Denmark and give this thing a try in the peak of summer. So this thing was running well. And it also happened to be my first introduction to a next generation Vacoma thrill ride. You know, I'd done several of their family coasters and some of their older thrill attractions, but Vacoma's a very different company now than when they first got started. And that definitely shows with this attraction. I'd never really quite done anything like it. So I think the best word that I could use to describe this attraction when I was first walking up to it was intrigued. I was really curious how it was gonna feel and I'm gonna do my best to describe those sensations to you today. That includes the pros and the cons. Now, a couple of the basic stats. We're looking at a height of 131 feet, max speed almost 60 miles per hour, just under 3,000 feet of track, total of three inversions, and the total cost for the attraction ended up being 100,000 Danish krone, which converted to the US dollar is just under $14 million. And the official model that they're giving this layout is the Wildcat. So I don't think it's that far-fetched to think that we might be seeing clones of this pop up in different locations around the world. I mean, this attraction is essentially located on flat ground, so they didn't have to worry about terrain or anything. But regardless, I would definitely love to see more of these pop up. So let's walk through this experience. First, when you approach the attraction, I gotta say what Farb did here is fantastic. This is a very visually impressive attraction. This park is completely surrounded by trees. It might as well be in the woods. And so you don't really see Phonix until you walk up to it. I love the track color they went with. This is a very pretty shade of green. I also love that they have a designated pathway that allows you to walk up right next to the drop. That's all the pathway does. It doesn't lead to any other rides. It's just so you can get that really cool view, which is something that I definitely appreciated. It's a pretty compact queue here as you're entering the ride. And then when you get to the station. It's not super well themed. It's very loose. But the thing that'll stand out to you here with the station is that corkscrew. They'll just fly completely over your head. For that reason, the station gets very loud because there's always guests screaming on it whenever the train passes through. And for a rightful reason, this is a pretty cool near miss. Definitely one of the best photo ops for the attraction. So you board your trains. This might as well be a lap bar restraint. There is a very flexible vest, but it's extremely comfortable. And the vest didn't really bother me at all. I mean, the core of the restraint is there on your lap. So I really like what Vacoma did here. This is the same type of train that you can find on some of their other models, such as Lech Coaster, Abyssus, rides of that nature. You dispatch out of the station, take a left-hand dip up your lift hill, and this thing gets to the top fast. It's just using a traditional chain, but you're at the peak in no time. Looking down the steep drop, I'm not sure if an angle of descent has been released for it or not, but if I had to take a guess, it's probably around 80 degrees, and you just get pulled through this thing. While at Far Up Summerland, I got four rides in on Phonix, most of which were towards the back. That's, of course, where that drop is really going to shine here. And overall, I would say that I preferred the back row to the front row. In my opinion, the front felt a bit more controlled. I think that the elements felt a bit more extreme the further back you go, but definitely try both out if you can. I do gray out here a bit at the bottom of the drop as it's going into the stall, which is some really fun hang time. You definitely feel it more towards the back. Honestly, it feels like you just kind of glide straight through it in the front, but just because the way the train is going through it, you really kind of get that full effect of the stall there towards the rear of the train. And then once again, I had a bit of a gray out coming out of this stall as you're kind of whipping into the next element. Now that wasn't every single time. That was probably on like the last ride of the day when it was running at full speed. But that was something that I wasn't expecting. So following that, we have this rapid twist to the right into this airtime hill. This is not sustained airtime though, because as soon as you hit the peak, you bank to the right. So it definitely kind of whips you to the side. And that's when you go into your second inversion, which is going to be this fast paced heartline roll. And this is one of the many moments of the coaster where you're getting pretty low to the ground there. You definitely see a lot more of that though towards the end of the ride. But it's just crazy to me that you're going from some of these elements that are decently high off the ground, then straight into this inversion that's staying pretty low there. That being said, the inversion was not as insane as I think I was expecting. I mean, when you're looking at this POV, it almost looks like it could be like a Mosasaurus roll type inversion. But let me tell you, it does not feel like the Mosasaurus roll, so don't get your hopes up. Following that, you're banking upwards into then a double down. That first top hill is also this twisted moment. And that's something that you'll notice with Phonix. What they've done with this layout is most of the airtime hills aren't your kind of traditional like camelback. Most of them typically end up twisting you in some way, which is definitely a cool sensation. But I 
think because it does that, that second down stands out to me more than the first one. That's a really nice pop. You're then gonna twist to the left. This is an awesome moment as it flies over the pathway. And then that's when you're gonna go into your final inversion, which is straight through the station. Epic near miss. Banking low to the ground. Two more twisted airtime hills. The first one banking you outwards to the right and then twisting you to the side again. And this moment right here very much reminds me of something that we've seen on a lot of RMCs. So following that section, we're now going to go into the final little portion of the ride. We have two back-to-back -back small airtime hills. Some of the only normal airtime hills on the roller coaster, which, hey, isn't a bad thing at all. There's a very low to the ground, the way I describe it, kind of wave turn, but it's so small and short that it doesn't have the full effect of a wave turn, but I wouldn't call it just a normal bank turn just because of the way that you're angled sideways. And then you twist out and go into one last pop into the brake run. Phonix is a very fast-paced attraction and it is extremely rewritable. Part of the reason I say that is because I wouldn't say this coaster is too intense. It does enough to be thrilling, but it's not overwhelming. It's a very satisfying ride experience. That's why when you watch the vlog, for our first time reactions, we're describing the coaster using the words pure fun. And that's because this is not a rip your face off insane roller coaster. Like I wouldn't say it was completely out of control or anything. Even though at times when you're like watching some of this footage, it looks like it would be that way. But the forces just aren't quite there. And the reason for that is because the people at Far Up Summerland specifically worked with Vekoma to make sure that this coaster would be not quite as intense because they have a family audience. But they were using Lech Coaster as a point of reference, which is a very intense roller coaster. They wanted this one to have less positive Gs. So if you've ridden Lech Coaster and then you go into Phonix expecting the same thing, you're probably going to be disappointed, which is why I'm glad I rode Phonix before Lech Coaster because even though Lech Coaster came first, that is the more insane roller coaster. But again, I don't use that as a knock to Phonix at all. I still think this is an extremely well rounded attraction. I really did enjoy it. I think you absolutely could make an argument for this being the best roller coaster in Denmark. To me, the only other attraction that really stands a chance is probably Paraten. At that point, it really comes down to whether you like old school Intamin or new gen Vacoma. They just feel different. But overall, I was definitely glad that this was my introduction to new gen Vacoma because it wasn't my favorite of their rides. But it does make me wonder if some of the newer rides that we're gonna be seeing from them are gonna be more in the style of Phonix or more like Lech Coaster. And at the end of the day, I really think it's gonna come down to the specific park that the attraction is going at, what sort of intensity they're looking for. Cause that's really gonna be the core difference. I mean, the actual elements don't look that different. It's really just how sustained or how sharp those positive and negative Gs are gonna be. So it'll be definitely something to watch. But for Phonix's final score, I'm gonna give it an eight and a half out of 10. I really enjoyed this ride. It absolutely sped up the more we rode it. Because I won't lie, I think that first ride that we did where you see that on-ride reaction, I was a little bit disappointed because it wasn't extreme as I was expecting, but I think that was really just an expectations thing. I don't have a problem that they decided to dial back this attraction a little bit because it's still extremely fun. I think this would be an excellent ride to just marathon over and over and over again. So let me know down in the comments below if you've had the chance to ride Phonix at Far Up Summerland in Denmark, what you thought of it, if you agree with the points that I made, and of course, stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios. We'll see you next time.